you're probably thinking to yourself, sorry, Dave, but you're not going to make a million dollars selling your whack-a-mole game just yet. Okay. Obviously, it's missing some fun aspects we're used to having for gaming. Yes, we've successfully demonstrated both using attached properties to set value for the grid row and grid column properties. And we even see how we can dynamically change things like the uh, uh, grid sizing okay, uh, for a given column and row and so on and so forth. Right? That's good. We've, we've done our job in terms of demonstrating that, but we can have a little bit more fun while we're here. One of the things that obviously was missing was the aspect of sound, right? When you whack a mole, you expect to hear something, right? So let's come back to the XAML for a second. In order to play sound, what we need is a media element. Now I'm going to leave the, the uh, uh, design view visible here for a moment because really I want to emphasize the point that this media element has no visual presence on the screen, right? It does not show up anywhere if, if I zoom out. Uh, Right, you see it doesn't show up anywhere at all. Okay, I'm done with it, I'm gonna get rid of that altogether. Okay, so I have to give it a name because I'm gonna be working with it in, from the code behind. Now I'm hard coding in the source, right? So I'm the source that only plays one sound at this point, I'm hard coding it in, which is also why I have to set this, autoplay equals false. If you have a source sound file, it could be a WAV file, this is a Windows Media, audio file, et cetera, whatever kind that is compatible. If you set a source file, then when the page loads, the default behavior is it would play the sound right away. So I don't want it to play it until somebody whacks them all, right? At that point, that's when we're gonna play the sound. So that's why I have autoplay is false here. Okay, so what do we need to do in the background? Well, really, I could get away. In fact, my sound is so short in, in its duration I could probably just, oh, remember the name of it was whack, right? So I could just say up here, whack. Oh. Dot play, right? And then There you go. So it plays the sound. Now, it would be very hard for me to manage to click while the sound is still playing because it's such a short duration. I had that issue with my last sound I was using when I did the demo for my last class because if it was quick enough, I could click it before it was finished playing. And you know what would happen? There would be silence, right? Because if you give the command to start playing, wow. It just ignores you. It says, hey, I'm busy. Go away. Okay. So I know it's working even without having to do this <laughs> in this particular case. I might as well kind of show you what you would do in that situation. What we really need to do, I'm just going to replace my code with the solution. There's no point making you uh, watch me do more typing than necessary. Okay. What we really have to do is we check the current state. If it is currently playing, Right. Then all we do is we set the position. Because remember, you don't see what sound wave files are like, right? The little cursor moves through as it plays from left to right, and you see the little uh, line goes going up and down, and so on. So basically, setting the position back to zero, and because it's a time span, we have to create a time span object with the value zero. That basically says start playing over, right? So if I click it and call this to run while it's still playing. It will just go back to the beginning and play the sound from there. Else, it just calls play. So if it's not currently playing, no problem. Our dot play command will just carry out and it will play the sound. Now, truth is, I probably don't need to go to this because my sound is so short in duration, but I wanted to share that with you as a solution in case you ever run into a situation where, yeah, how come my sound doesn't play? Because something called for an action uh, before it was finished. Okay, so that's good. So we've added sound. Woo! All right, we're making big improvements now on our game. It's much more fun and interactive. But you know, what else can we do? Well, we don't have much in the way of animation going on here, right? As it, as it just jumps from one place to another, it just appears there. Well, I can tell you there's a lot of animation capability in 
Windows, uh, universal Windows platform applications. Most of it you'll really get by adding a new little package, a new package, sorry, pardon my fumbling, uh, called behaviors. Right? There's a little bit of the animation just get to the button and then it'll be animation for that. But we can do a little bit better without adding a huge amount of more work. And besides, it's kind of interesting to learn about this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to the XAML because it's much less code to do in XAML than to do it all in C Sharp. I'm going to add a page resource. Page resources, there could be all kinds of things we might add as a page resource, right? But this one is just going to be a storyboard. I'm going to give it a name so I can refer to it in code, of course, show mole, right? And that's the name of my storyboard. And what kind of an animation am I adding in here? Well, there's different types, of course, but this is a double animation. Why is it double? Well, the property, the mole is our button, and we're going to play with the opacity. You're probably familiar with opacity because we've used it before. Basically, it's how translucent uh, an object is, right? Opacity ranges from zero, basically invisible, to solid color, one right or solid opacity so that's what we're going to do we're going to change it from zero to an opacity of one so it'll just fade in so to speak uh oh, what time duration will the animation take well this is hours minutes seconds so over one second it will go from zero to one right in other words become fully uh, solid in terms of its color not faded out we have to have enable dependent animation set to true for it to work okay feel free to look that up on your own Okay, so that just defines this animation. Again, the target name is the name of the object, in my case, my button. The target property is the property of opacity. And because the data type of the opacity property is double, that's why it's a double animation. So coming back to the code behind, now that we have that page resource defined, we can actually use it to, uh, maybe what I'll do is I'm gonna hide the mole initially after we click it, right? So before we do anything else, we'll hide the mole. So we've, you've used visibility before. So by setting visibility to collapse, that it basically makes it invisible, right? And then what we're going to do is after we've moved it to the new grid position and auto-sized it, right? Then at that stage, we're going to actually make it visible again. So we're going to show the mole, make the mole visible, and then we're going to animate it. Because although it's visible, okay, the animation will take it from basically an opacity of zero right through to fully solid, and then that will really show the mole itself. All right, so let's see the difference now with our little storyboard animation. Okay, and we called it by the name of the storyboard, it's animation dot begin. Okay, all right, so you see, well, let me make it, I don't know, a little easier to see if it's not jumping around the screen quite so. Let's see, it disappears, and then instead of just appearing fully, it kind of fades in. Is that super impressive animation? Give me a break. <laughs> I'm a programmer, I'm not a game designer, I'm not a graphics person, so this is the best animation you're going to get from me today. Anyway, it's a kind of fun thing. The, being able to do simple animations like that can be useful. Like picture you're, you know, you have some gauges on the screen, right? You install one of the toolkits and so on. So you've got some more fancy controls and you want to animate a gauge changing from one value to another. Another simple example of something where you can use a double animation right, to, to do that and so on and so forth. Okay, all right, good enough for now. So that's where I'd kind of planned on ending my little demo. But for a little bit more fun, a student asked a question the other day about having your universal Windows platform application use uh, text to speech, right? So that was the last thing I thought is we can actually have the mole say things back to you when you whack them. You know, maybe you want to set up so he randomly says something or have it say something on every whack, right? So that's going to be our next little part of our demo. So I'll stop and start the recording for that.